bags, braided slings, knitted scarves, socks and felt decorations, all using materials available locally. The money they earn helps to provide for basic needs, such as the children's education. It's their way of helping the Tibetan nomad community help themselves and a way to teach foreigners about traditional Tibetan handicrafts. Such is the success of Amdo's crafts that the younger generations are starting to learn the traditional skills as a way of preserving their culture and earning a little pocket money on the side. I think it's a really great idea because on the one hand, it gives the woman a side income, a sense of independence and empowerment, and on the other, people from around the world can enjoy these beautiful handmade products. So everyone wins. Aside from the local handicrafts, you'll find restaurants in town that serve authentic Tibetan cuisine. None of that watered down for tourist only stuff. Try the Sampa, a staple food of the Tibetan ethnic group. It's not really my thing, but you can't leave without trying it. It'd be like visiting Italy and leaving without sampling the pasta. However, if you tire of eating the same type of cuisine all the time, there's a famous restaurant in town that serves Western food with a local twist. Uh, I'm from Canada, so I'm yeah. in Shanghai. Right? Okay, what do you do in Shanghai? At an international school. How did you hear about um, Lamu Su? Well, I, I wanted to do a bike trip okay. uh, somewhere in China this summer. Right. And I was trying to pick out a place, so this friend of mine recommended Shanghai as being a really okay. unusual, uh, one of a kind place to, to really visit. Right. He'd been there 15 years ago. Okay. Uh, mm. So I was told that if you come to La Musa, there's one restaurant that you have to try, and it's called Leisha's Restaurant. And the owner who started it basically started as a, well, Chinese restaurant, but he had a lot of foreigners come here. So he was like, okay, well, why don't you come to my home, you know, cook whatever you like. And he ended up learning how to make apple pie, which is what this place is famous for. So when you come here, you definitely have to try the apple pie. But for now, I'm not sharing, so too bad. Mm, very good. Lamu Su is small, but this is very much part of its appeal to independent travelers. There's a real sense of community here, and even if you're here only for a day, you'll meet fellow travelers and locals willing to show you their culture. Usually, <laughs> usually to get into a Tibetan ethnic minority costume and take you just do it on your own. It's like it's taking three people to get me into this. It's really tight. Can't breathe. Okay. So apparently, the reason why you have it off the shoulder is because when it's cold, you can put both sleeves on, and when it's warm, you just take one off. And the other reason is, if you go out in the farm and stuff, it's more convenient if you have your sleeve off so you can, you know, do some manual labor. Well, uh, I don't really need to do any manual labor, but hey, why not? Looks pretty good, huh? Not bad? Good? Good? Good. <laughs> Fine. Oh, apparently inside here, right here, you can like stick stuff in, so he's got his hat inside right now. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's convenient. <laughs> okay. What do you reckon? Does he look to bed? Yeah, I do. After dinner, Baima, a Tibetan girl I'd met earlier in the day, invited me to a local gathering. This is the most complicated thing I've done so far. And I feel like I have two left feet. Okay, so now I go for it. Ah, so, me, ah, you Okay. I saw her, but... She 
told me that the Tibetan people love music and dance, and here in Langmusu, they gather in courtyards almost every night to dance. And to make the experience even more special, she's arranged for a couple of her friends to dress me in a traditional Tibetan costume. Though I'm not sure I'll quite look the part now that I've cut my hair short because all the women here have such beautiful long hair. <laughs> That was really fun. It was, it's one of the most tiring things, tiring, I can't even speak properly now. It's one of the most tiring things I've done in the whole trip. But after a couple of rounds, you kind of get the hang of it. Wait, how are you doing? Okay. And then, John. Oh, no, no. Is that the right finger? <laughs> you can sit at home and listen to me talk about Tibetan dance, or you could pack your things, come here, and experience it for yourself. More than just fun, you get a unique insight into the culture by learning the dance techniques. had a really good time here and part of me is begging to stay. But no such luck. Driving away from Langmusu, we pass an area where we can catch a glimpse of the Yellow River. It's 3,902 meters above sea level here, so we're all feeling a little short of breath. Not to mention the fact that it's freezing. The wind is howling and it takes some effort to stand upright. Yes, it's still July, but it sure doesn't feel like it. Up here, we bump into a monk who appears to be burning something. I'm not quite sure what it is, so I figured I'd go and chat to him. Turns out he mostly speaks Tibetan and very little Mandarin, so we did have a bit of a communication problem. But from what I saw, it seemed as though he was conducting some sort of ritual, which I later found out is called Weisang, and is traditionally performed every time a Tibetan passes through an opening in a mountain. First, you nip her incense powder, that's the powder the monk was shaking over the fire, is burnt along with an aromatic plant such as cypress, just to please the gods. While the fire burns, Prayers will be chanted, and finally, a longda, otherwise known as a fortune horse or paper horse, will be thrown in the air. It's a little piece of paper about two inches wide and four inches long, with a woodblock print of a horse on it. The Tibetan people have great respect and worship for horses, so throwing longda in the air and letting the wind catch them and carry them away is a symbol of a team of horses running free. It's said that throwing Londa from a sacred or high mountain will convey human wishes to the gods. <laughs> 